We live in really interesting times. We're surrounded by a duality that is palpable. And as I sit here in Expo 2020, and amongst all these incredible pavilions of which there's been more participation than any other World's Fair in its history since the late 1870s, I find myself in a cognitive dissonance around these topics that we throw around like innovation and humanity and sustainability. There's a, a plethora of challenges that we face. We feel these things real time uh, as jets and helicopters fly over certain parts of the world. And we wonder what the future will bring and maybe we worry about it. And then at the same time, there's this beautiful fabric of humanity that we've all been immersed in virtually and some of us physically for the last several days that tells us not only will everything be okay, but that our best days might just be ahead of us, not behind us. And the thing that keeps occurring to me in my mind as I contemplate this duality is choice. This idea that what we focus on expands. It's a fundamental law of the universe, I guess, that wherever energy goes or attention flows, that's the thing that grows. And it's kind of hard to pay attention these days. And at the same time, it's also hard to disconnect from the things we're giving our attention to because algorithmically, we've, like it or not, smart, not smart, thinker, non-thinker, we've all become somewhat robotically machined to a Pavlovian response through the technologies that have also liberated us and connected us at levels that have never for, been foreseen in the prior 10,000 years of humanity's history. I wonder what the future will bring to the bulk of humanity. I think about it a lot. I don't think about it through the lens of delusion or that there's some masterful purpose that individually any one of us can play. And at the same time, I understand that the power inside of each one of us has the ability to collectively make a real change or the inevitable downside being worse than we may desire. So as we wind up this conference and as we wind up this inevitable world summit this year, I want us to contemplate what we've thought about, what we've learned, what, what lights went off in our mind as we listened to this incredible group of speakers. And I want us to contemplate it through the choices that we will make next for our companies, for our, for our families, for our individuality, because choice is the asset. And at SDK, we build technologies that power choice, but that's more than a tagline to me after this weekend, after this event. It's, it's, it's more of an awareness that um, there's a bigger force at play, even in our own design, than we may occur. That, that, there's, that there's this fundamental kernel of choice that decides how free we will be individually and collectively, that'll decide how we will treat each other, that'll decide how much economic growth will unlock or destroy, and that every single day we get forced into decision trees, whether we like it or not. And that to pretend otherwise is to search for a blissful ignorance that we see in our children and that is special, but that as adults we cannot afford to, to claw back to. At some level, we all have to step up so that those children's children will have the same ability to run freefully around this park as they are right now, as I record this, looking at nothing but possibility.
when you listen to the voices, it's inspiring. I think in our heart we're only here because we're builders. We wouldn't be here if we weren't. We wouldn't be watching this. We wouldn't be listening to this. We wouldn't, we wouldn't care about all these things if we didn't somehow need at a visceral level to create, to, to, to do something, to manifest something that had not yet been accomplished by someone else. And, um, and I respect you and I honor you for that. And I, uh, I, I know our company is excited to be a company of builders, of doers, of, of, of dreamers and of, and of believers. And um, when we do those things, one of the first things that we have to preserve for everybody, regardless of whether we agree with their approach or not, regardless of whether we share the same ideology, uh, ideology or not, what we have to realize is that at some level, the unintended consequences of having dominion over one's data, having dominion over one's company or family or, or pursuit of greatness, that that being something we equally have access to is far greater than trying to control or limit the bad guys from having it at the cost of everyone else as well. We have to choose to accept that there are just some things that are not great about the human experience, but that's the very thing that makes the human experience so rich. It's what makes it so meaningful, and it's what makes this walk on this physical realm worth being here for. And so we have to get our heads around accepting that there are things that we will not like and that there's things that may come at us that that are, that are not desirable and that we'll still have to choose what we do with that input or that information. And I believe that's important. I think, I, I think that it's imperative and it, it always has been. And that when you look through history and you look out and project into the future, why humanity will have its best days is because it's willing to have days that are not so great. It's willing to have months or years or maybe even a decade that's tough. And it's willing to just continue to try and find better. Because the thing that is inevitable is more. More complexity than we can compute because we can't compute the complexity around us right now. More technology than we need because we don't know how half of it works that we have right now. More money supplies, more, more. More is inevitable. The business models, the incentives are built around this notion of more. Our capacity to take in more, individually and collectively, is less because we're, we're overwhelmed. We're biologically constrained by a hard drive that takes millions of years to evolve while we invent complexity in picoseconds. And so, Less is a reality. So more is inevitable, less is a reality. But that kernel in the middle, as my friend Mickey McManus would say, is better is in the middle. We can be better. We can do better. We can experience this notion of better. And that's what gets us out of bed every morning. And that's what should be our focus is how can we do better? Not how can we do more. Not how we can learn how to live with less, but just how we can focus on better. And one of the things that we've done at SDK Co. that we're proud to have showcased here inside of Bulgaria at the pavilion where we have offices is we've released an operating system that we think is better. And it'll continue to get better. It's an operating system that is grounded in the user having the proxy, not us or not the technology company that they rely on, that they are the proxy of that data kernel. They are the ultimate owner. 
they have dominion over it and that their device allows them the utilities to be in the world that is Web2 and, and social and banking and the things that they need to get through their day now that they've become completely reliant on. And at the same time, that they have the choice when they want to go, when they want to be better, when they want a better experience, when they want a safer understanding of, of their communication circle, that they can choose to go into what we call zero mode on the same device. And that, that it'll allow them to have certainty around their communication circle, that they know that those files, those conversations, those dialogues are truly in control of their experience. And yet they don't have to look more than one place or have more than one device to do it. So we'd love to show you the Meta Zero. This is the first device with a dual OS. Android based on one end called lifestyle mode with a full Android experience. Everything that you would imagine, all your favorite apps, the ones you can live with, the ones you can't live without. We call it smoking knowing that the heroin's not laced in it for those who want to have a quick laugh after all this seriousness. But at the same time, when you want to have certainty, when you want to have critical corporate communications or family communications or not have your child exposed to algorithms that maybe you don't know where they go and you don't want them manipulating your name, then you simply hold down the button and switch the OS and a couple of seconds later, you're in a completely different operating system, walled off in a completely different memory bank with a completely different SIM slot, with a completely different architecture that is completely private and secure with zero attack vulnerability. And that's why it's called zero mode. So introducing the Meta Zero, where you have lifestyle mode for all your daily needs and zero mode here at Expo 2020 Dubai from SDK Co. And as we leave you, from this amazing, inspiring congregation of the best of humanity. We hope that you'll focus on better. We'll hope that you remember that choice is the asset and that you add to the ecosystem of the next web to enable myself and your family and everyone around us, all 7.8 billion people, a better chance at tomorrow. Thank you for joining us at Inevitable World Summit. We'll see you next time.